Hey, what's going on, dudes and dudettes? I am the Mystical Green Beanie. So, first of all, this ain't gonna be one of those fuck Frank Miller videos. Uh, as I understand, that's kind of a popular opinion these days, which blows my mind. I mean, yeah, he wrote a comic where Batman calls Robin a retard and turned Wonder Woman into a misandrist and directed The Spirit uh, and also wrote one of the most Islamophobic comics of all time. But all that aside, I still got mad love for my nigga Frank. You know, that's my man's. You know, in fact, I think he gets unfairly maligned most of the time. You know, he's apologized for writing Holy Terror and explained his mental state when writing that book. Although that's probably not enough for some people and most likely never will be, and I completely understand and sympathize with that. However, he hasn't apologized for All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, but I don't think he needs to. And I also think that people take that book way too literally. Because I'm in the camp of people who think that book is a parody. Either that or I'm just reading too much into it, but either way, he's Frank Miller. You know, this is the man who made Daredevil a household name, and he also elevated Batman from being a B-list hero to being a triple S tier golden standard hero, which people forget about. And speaking of which, I wanted to talk about The Dark Knight Returns in this video. So, I love Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. It's hands down one of my favorite superhero comics ever. I think it's masterful in its presentation of social political commentary and is a wonderful deconstruction of not just Batman, but the DC universe as a whole. Plus the art's great and I think the story's really fun because despite all the heaviness of the subject matter that Frank Miller is tackling, he never forgets that he's writing a story that takes place in the DC universe. But yeah, uh, this comic is great, it's well written, it's well drawn, it's beautifully colored, and it's an iconic piece of literature. However, I think this comic is iconic for all the wrong reasons, and that this book not only ruined Superman, it kind of ruined Batman moving forward. And I think that for the past 30 plus years, everyone learned the wrong lesson from this comic, regardless of whether or not they loved it or hated it. I honestly feel like this is one of the most misunderstood comics to ever exist. Uh, first of all, the vast majority of people who've read this comic from what I've gleaned in conversations with folks is that this is the book about Batman beating the shit out of Superman because Superman's a conservative fascist and, and, and fuck him. Also, Batman's cool because he's a human being and, and fuck those other superheroes because Batman could probably beat him up too because he's a real hero. Well, I just reject your hypotheses. Okay, so, first of all, Dark Knight Returns isn't even a heroic story. Like, everyone in this comic is bad. Or, at the very least, they've compromised their morality for the sake of the mission. But at this point, they've become the worst versions of themselves because they've betrayed everything that they've ever stood for, and as a result, have become perversions. You know, many people seem to forget this about Superman, but Superman is a social crusader who fights on behalf of the little guy. And that's kind of the whole point of his alter ego working as a journalist. But in Dark Knight Returns, Superman is no longer the peace-loving social crusader who's looking out for the average Joe. He's no longer a hero to the people. He's the propaganda tool of a fascist government and Ronald Reagan's personal anti-Soviet weapon. Meanwhile, Batman, who has dedicated his entire life to fighting organized crime, deposes the leader of a mutant gang, and replaces him. Because after Batman beats him up in the junkyard, the mutants turn themselves into the sons of Batman, and they literally do exactly what the fuck they were doing when they were the mutants, except now, instead of attacking innocent people, they were attacking other criminals. They essentially become a vigilante mob, one that Batman ultimately takes ownership over which makes Batman the leader of a gang. In other words, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Oh, guys, yo, I think the Dark Knight might be a thematic adaptation of the Dark Knight Returns. 
So, did everyone else already know that? Oh. It's cool. I was always an intellectual waste of space anyways. I'll just kill myself after the video. Ah, oh, suicide is badass. And like I said earlier, uh, this comic kinda sorta broke the character of Batman. At least in pop culture. Uh, comics are a little different. Especially post Grant Morrison. And I know that I suck Grant Morrison's dick a lot, but like, come on. I think we can all admit that after Morrison started writing Batman, everyone working at DC had this reset where they were all like, oh yeah, Batman's supposed to be a, a cool detective in a bat costume and not some psychotic neo fascist adrenaline junkie. I mean, Jeff Johns was critical in that role as well because. I think he's the first person to really point that out and use it as a point of critique in Infinite Crisis, but there is a clear effort to mimic Frank Miller's Batman within the comics between the late 80s and the mid 2000s, especially all the material written by Chuck Dixon and Alan Grant. And the influence was seen in the art as well, with guys like the late great Norm Brayfogle, Kelly Jones, Jim Lee, Tim Sale, just visually everyone starts pulling from the Dark Knight Returns, and that influence is undeniable. But comics aside, Batman in pop culture is just Dark Knight Returns Batman. And part of that's also due to the influence of the animated series, which was heavily influenced by Dark Knight Returns, among other things, but mainly Dark Knight Returns. The Arkham games also pull heavily from Dark Knight Returns, especially Arkham City and Arkham Knight. And pretty much all the live action films are as well. Most notably, the Nolan trilogy and Zack Snyder's Batman. And believe me, as a comic book fan, I can understand how infuriating that is. You know, Batman is a wonderful character with 80 plus years of history and mythology, and all anyone wants to talk about or adapt or pay homage to is The Dark Knight Returns. Like, nigga damn, there's other shit there. Now, with all that said, it's hard to deny that Dark Knight Returns left a good mark on the character and not only improved on ideas that were already present, but introduced ideas that made Batman better and more interesting. First off, the notion of having Bruce be a legitimate ninja is absolutely wonderful in my opinion. Just retroactively, it makes a lot of sense for the character. And to a degree, I like how gritty he established Gotham City as being. You know, he actually gave the city a character, and in that, I'd say he established a proper tone for Batman, which in my opinion was the key ingredient that was missing in Batman comics before Dark Knight Returns and subsequently Year One. Because while I do agree that Frank gets too much credit for making Batman darker, when in reality, guys like Frank Robbins and Carmen Infantino and Roger Stern and Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams and Len Wein and John Callahan and a bunch of other writers and editors and artists paved the way for Frank from the late 60s well into the mid 80s. However, he does deserve credit for positioning Batman in a proper niche, such as Superman being a somewhat of a cosmic horror science fiction character, and Spider-Man being a romance crime thriller character, and so on and so on. But yeah, uh, I love Dark Knight Returns, and I love Frank Miller, but this comic broke Batman. You know, not even just Batman. It broke the DC Universe, because after it came out, not only did everyone working at DC learn the wrong lessons from its success, but everybody who read it took away the wrong message. It's not a story about, you know, oh shit, Batman's so cool, and he's dark and, and fucked up, and Superman's a piece of shit, bruh. It's Robocop. It's Fahrenheit 451. The world of Dark Knight Returns is dystopian in nature. You're not supposed to look at the Dark Knight Returns and say, that, that's what Superman is and should be. Or, yes, that's the perfect version of Batman and that's how he should always be portrayed. That's like watching Blade Runner and thinking to yourself, flying cars? Robot clone bitches? Yes, Lord, sign me the fuck up! But for the past 30 years, that's almost exactly what people did. Not for Blade Runner, but for Batman. And I don't blame Frank Miller for that. Uh, because I don't like to blame an artist for people misunderstanding their work. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, those are my thoughts on The Dark Knight Returns and how it ruined Batman, but it's not Frank Miller's fault. Oh, that's actually a good title. Uh, better than the one I was originally going to go with. Uh, but yeah, what about you guys? Uh, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Uh, is All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder a parody? I think so. But I also think that Terminator 2 Judgment Day broke the Terminator franchise. So, I might just be retarded. But like I said, intellectual waste of space. But what are your thoughts? Let me know down below in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, hit the like button, share support the channel, and if you want to see more content like this, all you have to do is subscribe. I'm the Mystical Green Beanie, thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, adios nachos, adios.